Today is another day, another Sunday, that Jesus speaks in parables, and that too, again, like last Sunday, on seeds. Well, we see the first parable is about the wheat and the weeds. When we see this parable, you and I should understand how to get rid of, how to take it away. Is it easy to remove? Is it easy to get rid of? Well, many people will say, remove that from your life. Remove that from your room. Remove it from your class, from your books. Remove all these. From all your collections, remove. It's really difficult sometimes to remove. Well, nowadays we all receive many WhatsApp messages. I to receive. The last one that I received was Pope Francis is coming to India in November 2017. Now, to believe or not to believe, whether he's going to come or not, waited, and finally confirming message that it is not true. And as soon as I come to know it is not true, delete the whole message. There are so many messages that we get. We wait and we see how to delete all these messages. Sometimes we store them so much that there is no space in our smartphones. And finally, when your phone is full, then you look out which one to remove. And you want to remove all the bad ones, waste ones, just uselessly occupying place. And then you realize when you are removing all these, suddenly you remove nice messages as well, that which you wanted to store and keep it. And sometimes you want to remove the whole thing. And it's so difficult. And that is the reason why we see Jesus also saying about the weeds and the wheat. How the weeds, if you remove, the wheat also will be removed. Therefore, the good can be removed when you are removing the bad. The bad should remain so that when it gets ripe, you will know that this by its fruit is good. This by its fruit is bad. Because Jesus himself says, you will know the tree by the fruits that it bears. Now, how long to wait to find out whether it's useful or not? We have to wait. That is what Jesus says for the harvest time. There are good reasons for many of us to leave the weeds. There are many good reasons for us to keep the bad things around. But we find first the differences between useful and useless. You have to see very clearly whether this is useful or this is useless. And then when we want to remove it, then we have to be careful. For example, in a classroom, you find good boys, good girls, and then there is one nuisance person or a student, and then you want to remove that person. And when you remove that person and remove him from the school, then you find that you have done a great job. Your headache is over. But finally, you find that you have spoiled his future. Because later on, he excels in everything. Therefore, we find that the weeds, plants, which we consider useless, might turn out to have and to become useful. Why? Because every useless thing can be transformed into a useful thing. For example, even in the age-old ways, when they were looking at all the fields, our ancestors did not know about the wheat. When they realized that the wheat was something that we can use for our daily bread, then they realized that the wheat has to be kept. If not, it was like any shrub, like any wheat. Therefore, we find that our ancestors domesticated the wheat to make it for our livelihood. The bad that was there known that time becomes a good purpose for each one of us. That is the reason why Jesus says, wait. 
and then in the due season you'll come to know which is good and which is bad. The second parable that we see here is a mustard seed. Mustard seed, when Jesus speaks about it, the mighty things happen in a small account and in a small way. Great things and great achievements happens with a small and a humble beginning. Now when we look at that aspect, I like to compare it with our Blessed Mother. When she appeared to the little children, 100 years back in Our Lady, uh, in Fatima, and how she also showed them that this is how the hell would be. And when she showed them that this is how the hell would be, she also taught them prayer. She said, you have to pray. And one of the important prayers that she taught was, oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those who need thy mercy. And this prayer has saved so many people. Therefore, a small beginning can bring to a beautiful culmination. That is the reason why she shows them the hell and then she wants them to have prayer in their life. We want everybody to be part of this great harvest. Therefore, she comes to save each and every one so that we may be part of that great harvest. That's the reason why St. Alphonsus says, all those who pray will be saved and all those who do not pray will be condemned. And that is what we see in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 2744, 2744. It very clearly says that you have to have prayer. And that small little daily prayer can save you. And that is how small things can bring you to the bigger joy in this world. Today the last parable that we see is the East Seed. The East seed is the kingdom compared to the flower mixed with East. The kingdom is compared to the flower in which the East is mixed. Put a little yeast and in due time it will have its effect. It will show its effect. And that is why the kingdom of God is compared so that the bread baked with the East becomes very delicious. That is well, that is to show that Jesus has this dynamics. The dynamics that Jesus has is the parable that he wants to show about the East is that he wants few dynamic people in his kingdom. Few dynamic people in this world who can do his work, who can be the real East, who can really show people the way to the Father. That is why the little pockets of Catholics who do a lot of work like an East, bring that message of Christ to all. Therefore, we are all crops of Christ. We are all crops of Christ. And if you look at the ways how the church has grown, the church has grown and been transformed in pockets of Christian life, in four fields, Firstly, Jesus and a few Christians changed the life of women. That was the East. Changed the life of a woman. We find so many references how Jesus has transformed the life of women in the society. The second aspect that we see is few Christ followers transformed the life for the sick. They became the East. So many people who work for the sick people. And they have become the real workers for the kingdom of God. The third aspect is Christianity improved old people's life. There's so many houses we have, convalescent centers to look after the elderly people. They became the East. And the last one is Christianity improved life for little children, especially children abandoned, children just left on the roads, 
children who are not wanted in the family. And that is how they become the ease to look after such groups. And that is the reason why they become the crop for Christ. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, when we see these three parables of Jesus trying to explain to us the beauty of our life, that we may become an important person in his kingdom, that we may become the East in our church, that because of you, we can do a lot of work. You can also contribute. You can also collaborate with the church and thereby you make your life as well as the life of the church as the harvesting season. Amen. Let us all stand for the creed. Let us all together say,